Amen, amen. Come on. Let's give God a hand clap this morning. <laughs> Pastor BJ, God has his hand on you. Amen. God is uh, transforming BJ Guerra and his bride and his family, his business, all the things that make him up, them up. Amen. So love you. God is good. Amen. Amen. All the time, God is good. Do you always believe that, or is it just a fancy statement, cliche thing to say? So, God is good. Say this with me Summer of Transformation. I know that the Lord has spoken a word to us as a church, as a body, as a group. Individually, the church is made up of individuals. So as we go, the church goes. As we grow, the church grows. As we learn, the church learns. The church is not a body in and amongst itself, amen? The church is made up of collective people that drive a group, a body, in one direction. Transformation is this. I want you to write this down because we'll be here most of the summer with this definition. Transformation is intentional action. So put it in your phone, write it, inscribe it in your mind. Intentional action and intentional process produces. So when you intentionally act and you intentionally put processes in place, it will produce dramatic and thorough change in form and appearance. Intentional action, intentional process produces dramatic and thorough change in form and appearance. Romans chapter 12, we'll put it up on the screen. Romans chapter 12 says this, verses 1 and 2. I'd like for you to memorize these verses. I'd like for you to put them into memory. <clears throat> Study this. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, I urge you, I desire for you. Therefore, Cameron, put your name in Scripture. I beseech you, therefore, Whitestone Church, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Cameron, present your body as a living sacrifice. If I ask of you, Cameron, to get up early to spend time with me, sacrifice that 30 minutes of rest, move the sleep out of your eye, And spend time with me. Cameron, if I ask that you present yourself a living sacrifice and you go and you help your neighbor move, then then don't complain about it. You are not your own. You are a living sacrifice. If I ask of you to write a check and remove savings from your account and to give to someone else or to trust me with this, don't complain. You are a living sacrifice. I beseech you, Cameron. I desire for you. I urge you, therefore, Whitestone Church, By the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy, the word holy doesn't mean to do good things. It means to be set apart. My marriage is holy. Even if Stacy and I are arguing or even if we're in a fight, she is still the woman that I have chosen and set her apart from all other women on the planet. Amen? So holiness means to be set apart. It means to be... To, to be in a covet, a covenant, uh, I can't even say the word. It's covet, I, I'm, not, I'm looking for the wrong word. It, it's something that is given to God. Amen? It's holy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, holy, acceptable to God, which is just your reasonable service. It's not even above average. It's just reasonable to act this way. And here it is. Do not be conformed. Say conformed. conformed. Without intentional action. And without intentional process, you will not be transformed. You will just conform. If I just watch the TV show that comes across that everybody else is watching, if I just entertain myself, then Game of Thrones will conform me to the way of Hollywood. Are you with me? Sorry for all of you people who are are Game of Thrones. but, But you'll just get conformed. It'll, it'll just conform. It'll shape you. It'll mold you. And dramatic change will happen. 
but it won't be transformation from God. Amen? Don't be conformed. Fight against conformity. Hitler wanted conformity. He called it the Aryan nation. He wanted everybody to look like, walk like, talk like this. God did not design us to be stormtroopers, robots, soldiers that all looked alike. He, he desired that we would be transformed into his image, into his unique creation. Amen. Be not conformed. Fight against conformity, Cameron. Do not be conformed to this world's idea of success. Do not be conformed to this, this world's idea of how to pastor a church. Do not be conformed to the way other pastors pastor their church. Don't be conformed to the ways of this world. Don't allow your business to be conformed to this world. Don't allow your marriage just to be conformed to the ways of the marriage of the world. Don't be conformed to the idea of retirement that the world says is retirement. Do not be conformed to this world. But Cameron, be transformed. Say transformed. transformed. Being transformed is going to require that I intentionally act. And I intentionally put processes in place. If I'm single and I'm dating, I'm going to intentionally put processes that would not allow me to conform to, the, to a bed that I shouldn't be in with, with somebody I'm not married to. So I'm going to intentionally say, you know what? I know we're both adults and we're both single, but we're not going to be in each other's house past 9 p.m. We're not going to be alone in the same place that could allow us to conform to what our bodies desire until the day that we say I do. Amen. So I'm going to intentionally put some actions in place. You know what? I can't go to that club anymore because I might find myself conforming to the desires of that club and I'll pick up that drink. I'm going to intentionally put actions and, and processes in place so that I don't just conform to the things of this world, but that I get transformed. Amen. I'm going to be transformed. Even if it means I throw my smartphone away and trade it in for a dumb phone, I don't have to have it to live in this world. Are you with me? Whatever that is, we got to put these processes in place. Do not be conformed, but be transformed. Brother Todd's being transformed right at, right at this moment. Amen? Amen? I'm serious. Transformed. If you want to know what that's all about, ask him after the service. Because it's powerful. 72 hours in. Transformation. By the renewing, say renewing, renewing. of your mind. Transformation comes through the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word of God is truth. The word of God is morality. The word of God is the ethics we live by. The word of God is the law that we judge by. The word of God is what will enter into your mind. Take every thought captive, Cameron. Take all your thoughts captive about that employee. Take all your thoughts captive about about that person in your family. Take all those, ca those thoughts captive about the president. Take all those thoughts captive about the stock market. Take all your thoughts captive. And if you'll put them through my filter, what will remain will only be truth. But if Cameron allows Cameron's thoughts to rule him, I won't be transformed into the image that God wants me to be. I'll just be conformed into the ways of the world. Are you with me? You've been around conformed people long enough. And you don't like the conformity. You either sub, sub, succumb to it or you resist it. Are you with me? So here we go. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, say prove, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Turn with me to John chapter 15. We're in our fourth week of this transformation series. The first week we introduced transformation. Then we talked about a religious spirit that would rise up in believers to stop transformation. And last week we addressed fear that attacks the believer to stop transformation. This week I want to dive into John chapter 15, the first 11 verses. We have to get ready for change. We have to get ready for change. Change is coming every minute of every day. Like it or not, change is coming. Amen? Amen? We all say on one hand, oh, I want things to change. 
But what we really say is I want things to change as long as I don't have to change. I want my marriage to change as long as she'll change or he'll change, but I ain't changing because I'm perfect, right? I want my kids to change into the way that I want them to act, but I'm not going to change. You know the best thing my mom ever did for me? One of the best things. We were driving back from my sister going to college at Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches, Texas. And I had my driver's license or permit or something, or I just was illegally driving. My mom let me do a lot of crazy things. But I was driving the minivan back with my mom. We took my sister there to drop her off or whatever. We're driving home. It's like a four-hour drive. And we're battling over the radio station. Are you with me? So my mom says, well, why don't you just play what you want to play? So I'm like, yes, score. And now I'm like, how do I get rid of my mom? Now I just got the car, my own radio. Now, now I could be, no, I'm, I, you know, I didn't want to get rid of her. But you understand what I'm saying. Mom, you want to sit in the back seat? So, so look, anyways, okay, never mind. So there wasn't any, any good looking girls on the back roads on the, on. <sighs> but she said, well, I want to hear the lyrics to all these songs that you want to play. So she listened to the songs and listened to the music. Instead of telling me to conform, she changed and allowed me to introduce her to what I wanted to hear. Are you with me? And it really changed my world because I did not want to tell her what the lyrics were really saying, right? So I was like, oh no, let's listen to your music now, mom. This is great, you know. Anyways, just a little side note, parenting tip. John chapter 15. We have to get ready for change. We have to submit. Say submit. Submit. Oh, bad word. Do you really want to submit? If you don't want to submit, you just need to bail out on Christ following. If you don't want to submit, you just need to close your Bible, walk away, because you'll just be playing a game. If I don't want to submit to the word of God, then I'm not a Christ follower. I, I really, I, I'm, not, I'm not using the word that we like to use, the word Christian, because we've kind of watered down the word Christian as a social or political uh, you know, box. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Christian. I'm, not, I'm an atheist. You know, we just kind of put them in these. Christ following demands our submission to Christ. Every minute of every day. In order to change, we have to submit to pruning. Say pruning. Pruning. I want to throw in the two words. And I want you to hear this. As I preach this message, uh, started preaching this message four weeks ago, or this is the fourth week. Uh, An interesting thing, a friend of ours called um, literally two or three nights before the first sermon and, and no, after the first message and said, hey, Cameron, I had this prophetic vision last night. I know I hadn't talked to you in over a year, but I just really felt like I need to tell you this word. And the word was, Cameron, you're really preaching to yourself. So I kind of fell over and thought, I already knew that one, but did you have to call and tell me that, God? I want you to really hear me on this. I'm not preaching at you. Um... I'm really telling you where God's taken me. And I'm really telling you that it's not just the Cameron journey. It is the Whitestone journey. And if this is where God's brought you to to be a part of this body, I'm telling you God's taking us to this place. But as pastor, I can't say let's go if I'm not going. Then I'm hypocritical. Then Then I'm just telling you something and you'll sniff that out real fast. Amen? So let's just go on this journey. Here's the introduction for today. Reduction and pruning. Reduction and pruning. This is the word for this week. God is saying there are some things that you need to reduce in your life. We live in America and Americans like to gather. We like to store. We like to prepare and to hoard, if you will. Now, some people are hoarders and don't, you know, I'm not talking about just people that got a bunch of stuff, but we have a bunch of stuff and God's saying you need to reduce some things. Are you with me? Amen. So, so here it is. Let's just read through these 11 verses. John chapter 15. I am the true vine. 
This is Jesus speaking. If you have a red letter Bible, these are all going to be Jesus' exact words. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch, Cameron, in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch, Cameron, that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that's in me that bears fruit, he prunes that branch. He reduces it. He removes success. He removes things that are going well. He removes things that they do well, that they have been handling for a while. He removes the th very thing that he started to grow. Are you with me? See, there's a lot of believers who are saying, I am connected to the vine. I'm a branch of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. I'm a daughter or a son of God. I asked Jesus in my heart, and if we look like tree limbs, if we look like tree branches, we should have fruit at the end of the branch. Are you with me? So some of our branches may be six or eight or 10 or 12 inches long. And that would be somebody that's new in Christ, if you would. And then there's other of us, if we could see our branches, maybe we're two, three, four, maybe even 10 or 20 feet long with several branches coming off. Are you with me? But as you, as an untrained, I don't think there's any great vine dressers in the room. I don't know if any, some of you may be wonderful with, you know, growing wine or grapes or whatever. But, but we could look at a branch on an apple tree or a tree that should be bearing some sort of fruit. And we would go, wow, that branch doesn't have anything hanging from it, but all these do. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. So we have the ability, Jesus says, identify the person by their fruit. Not what they say, just look at the fruit they're producing. Look at how fruitful they are. How fruitful is that ministry? How fruitful is that marriage? How fruitful is that parenting tactic? How fruitful is their work conduct at work? How fruitful are they? So it says this, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now listen, there are a lot of branches I like to swing from. Are you with me? There's branches that, that we've tied ropes and put tires on and we enjoy because that branch is very strong. We are used to that. But there's a lot of branches that aren't necessarily bearing fruit. Now they once may have, but for whatever reason today they're not. Are you with me? So God says, listen, I'm going to come in and cut those things out. Now the deeper message here should really scare us because what God's saying is, hey, listen, there may be a hundred people in your church claiming to be Christ followers, but only 80 of them are producing fruit. 20 of them aren't even real branches. Now just... The word of God should scare the hell out of us. But when we read the word of God and we dumb it down, oh, these are good morals, these are good lessons to live life by, that's not true. This is the truth, the word of God. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he just takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, listen to this, every branch that bears fruit, God who's not out to hurt me, who's not out to, you know, put me in my place. He's not out to, to make me small. He's out to grow me and to use me to my fullest potential. Are you with me? Every branch that is bearing fruit, he's going to come in and prune it. He's going to come in and cut out some things that prevent it from bearing more fruit. Are you with me? This process of reduction and pruning is going to hurt. And you're going to look ugly for a while. You ever seen a freshly pruned tree? And you're like, what was the guy thinking? Is he a beginner? I, should, I knew I shouldn't have got him off of Craigslist. I should have gone with the better guy. And you're, you're crying and you're, you know, you, your neighbors come home and go, what the heck? But then a year later, it's like whoosh, this beautiful canopy. Are you with me? Let's, let me just kind of read these and not, not talk about it too much. Here we go. 
I'm the true vine and the father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. That's his intent. You are already clean, Cameron, because of the word which I spoke to you. And I want you to highlight, starting in verse 4, put a, put a mark here on this word, abide. Cameron, abide in me. Live. Okay, I told you I wouldn't break it down yet. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch, Cameron, cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Three times in one verse. I am the vine, Cameron. You are the branch. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, Cameron, you can't do anything. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they are gathered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciple, my follower. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. The word abide appears 10 times in 11 verses. I think we need to pay attention to it. Are you with me? Some of our gospel theology has been, ask anything in Jesus' name and it will be given to you. That's not exactly what it says. It says if you're abiding in him and you ask something, then you're going to ask his will. Are you with me? And when we ask his will, he'll back it up because we're his son or his daughter and he loves us that much. Are you with me? This thing of abiding is where reduction is going to take place. So I could throw out a lot of areas of reduction. But some of us need to walk through this pruning process. There are some things in our own lives that we can spot. We can say, you know what? I'm spending way too many hours on social media every day. I'm going to reduce that by 50%. I'm going to reduce that by 80%. God, I may even give you 100% of that time because it's just wasted time. Are you with me? I'm going to reduce the time that I spend with entertainment and reduce this time that I spend in self-indulgence and I'm going to change that and go work in the field. I'm going to go do what you call me to do. I don't know where the reduction has to happen. But God is saying, listen, there's some areas that you know already you need to reduce. Can I get an amen? amen? But the area where the vine dresser comes in is when God comes in and says, hey, Cameron, man, that's a really good work you're doing. Thank you, God. Look at all the fruit that you bore in this area. Look at how well this has gone. But you know what? That day is over. No, it's not, God. Are you kidding me? No, it's not over, God. I lean on that branch. I got a tire. I swing from that one. Are you with me? That one gives my barbecue pit a lot of shade. We ain't cutting that one off. And God says, yeah, if you'll submit to me, I'm going to cut that off. Well, God, if you cut that off, it's going to, what, everybody's going to think I'm not doing it. God, if you cut that off, then, then what, how are we going to, God, if you cut that off, are you, are you kidding me, God? Did I not do it right? Or am I not honoring you with that? Yeah, no, Cameron, thank you, thank you, thank you. Day's over. Shh, let's cut it off. Trust me. Are you with me? We're entering a season where God says it's time to let go. It's time to reduce. It's time to get focused. Because Cameron, listen, this tree that you're growing, it pulls a lot of nutrients and water out of the ground. And if it's got 12 branches, it's going to feed all 12 branches. And that's a good thing. It got you this far. But I need to take you to a different place. You need to be a little more focused, a little more zeroed in. So we're going to cut six of these 12 branches off 
and you'll get more fuel and nutrients of those six than you did those 12. And trust me, at the end of the time period that it takes to do this thing, it's going to grow even more and produce even more fruit. See, some of us are entering into a season of reduction when it says we need to delegate other tasks to other people. Hey, listen, I know that you can do this really well. You are a great lawnmower. I'm, I'm totally not talking about myself right now, but, but your landscaping skills are above board. But hey, if I'm going to take you to the next level, you're going to need to hire somebody to do that for you. Well, they're not going to do it right, God. They, they don't know how to run a... No, they do not know how to do it as well as you today, but give them six weeks and they'll outdo you. No, they won't, God. No, no, they'll never outdo me. Oh, yeah, they will. You just got to give them... Are you with me? What is it that God's walking you through that says, listen, if transformation's going to take place, you're going to have to drop some things. You're going to have to get rid of some things. So I think it's a dual process. I really believe God's bringing to your mind some things right here, right now, that God's saying, hey, it's time to hand that off. It's time to give that up. It's time to let that go. You've been fueling that unforgiveness for far too long. That branch is dead. We're cutting that off. It's time that you get back on fire for me and start producing fruit. Remember when Jesus is walking into Jerusalem? He wasn't having a bad day, but he saw a fig tree, and that fig tree wasn't producing any fruit. There were no figs on the tree, and it was the season for the tree to have figs. Are you with me? And Jesus curses the fig tree. And the next day or two, or the next day, I think, literally the next day, him and his disciples are walking back by, and the disciples are amazed because the tree is completely withered and dead in less than 24 hours. Are you with me? See, when God looks at my life, when he looks at my tree, I want to be bearing fruit. And this is where this transformation comes into place. I'm going to tie these two together. But, but my first statement is I want to be bearing fruit. But I'm smart enough to know there's a lot of things I'm doing that aren't really producing the fruit that God needs them to produce. Or he says, hey, that fruit's no longer needed. Thank you. Are you with me? But I'm not really smart enough or willing enough to let go because I find a lot of security. I find a lot of shade. I find a lot of, of fruit. I get, I get fruit from that tree too. I, I, I like what that tree's producing because it makes me look good. Oh, I like it. I like that because it keeps me well fed. Are you with me? But God's saying, yeah, it's not about you. It's not about that. We're cutting this thing off. We're reducing you. See, Cameron, you've got to decrease well, no, God, you want me to grow and produce fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to decrease first. You'll have to submit and allow me to come in and cut. And then you'll increase. If you'll humble yourself, then I'll lift you up. If you'll decrease, then I, Jesus, can increase. That's what I meant to say. If you'll decrease, then Jesus can increase. And when Jesus increases in us, we bear fruit. Are you, are you with me? So I really want to ask this question today. In the study of transformation, transformation is your purpose colliding with God's timing. Your purpose hitting that intersection of perfect timing when God says, now's the time. Listen, I put this purpose in you to fund that orphanage. I put this purpose in you to write the logins a, a $50,000 check. To send the violas $50,000 to finish their project. I purposed you for that. But it's not the time today. That time's coming in 14 days. Or 17 days. Or 5 years. Or how, whatever God's perfect timing. Are you with me? I purposed you to talk to that lady at HUB. Not today. You just wait till I tell you. Your purpose colliding with God's timing is going to create transformation. It's going to create a change in your heart, somebody else's heart. It's going to produce fruit. Are you with me? But some of us are so heavy, 
that we can't travel as fast and as lean and as mean. We're not in fighting shape. Are you with me? God's calling us to this place where he needs us to be ready in season, out of season. He is calling us to this place where it is going to be time to move. And if we've got so many minutes, see, see what happens in churches is we, we start having a, a, a Bible study on Tuesday morning, a Bible study on Tuesday night. We start having this and this and this, and all of a sudden we'll have 48 different things going on. Are you with me? 48 different good ministries that produce fruit, change lives, impact people. But what if God comes in and says, yeah, we're going to cut away 22 of those things. Oh no, God, then the church will think we're not doing nothing. Then, then we'll, uh, and, 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 and God will say, Who's the vine dresser here? You, whose church is it? Your, your, whose will? Do you want to produce my fruit or do you just want to do a lot of activities? And God says, come in, we're going to cut that out. Are you with me? What is in your life that God says, I'm ready to prune that? Would you be still? You ever take a rambunctious three-year-old in for a haircut? You got to give them some Benadryl before they get there. You know what I'm saying? We got to, we got to, oh, you know, keep them still to, to get, God's saying, hey, listen, I mean, this, this is what's going to happen. I know Stacy and I were great parents, but this, this was, <laughs> honey, was that a cough? Yeah, I heard a cough. Yeah, Benadryl. <laughs> the statement is this. It's time to allow God to reduce us. I want to look at verse five or verse six real quick. Look at this again. Verse six. If anyone does not abide in me, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch. What's salvation? What's being saved? Is being saved saying a prayer? What's marriage? Is marriage just saying I do at an altar? Or is that husband and wife abiding together, living together, good and bad and ugly together? Is that couple learning each other? Is that, is that couple allowing and serving one another? Or is it just all about them? Or is it just about cohabitation? See, abiding means to live in, live with, breathe with, move with, be in sync with. When I read this verse, it causes me to really contemplate what's going on in this branch if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned are you producing fruit if we took off your christian bumper sticker and we threw away your christian t-shirts and got rid of all your christian jewelry And we didn't allow you to just speak for a whole month. Would people I still identify you as a Christ follower based upon your fruit? Or is some of our speech destroying our fruit? Is the way that we're responding to people, is that, is that just destroying all credibility? It, I mean, what, what is it going to take for us to go, God, am I bearing fruit? Man, God, I'm a great musician, and I stand up here every Sunday. I'm not picking on the band, but, but well, I can sing for you. But off the stage, are you, are you bearing fruit? Oh, I can preach for you, Jesus. Watch this, man. I, I can dissect the Greek and the Hebrew, which I can't. But, oh, I can, I can make them think I can. But, but what do your employees say? How, 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 what's your neighbor? What, what are your kids? My bearing fruit. This summer, what if by Labor Day, you gave God permission to cut out of you all bitterness, all unforgiveness, all anger, all garbage that's keeping you from producing something that other people can consume and it would give them nutrition. It would nourish them. Are you with me? This summer, it's a call to change. 
Don't put it off for another, oh, I'll see what he's got to say next week. Man, I may not be here next week. You may not be here next week. What if it's just about right now today? And God says, listen, bear fruit today. Let's stand and pray. Verse 3 of chapter 15. Verse 3 of chapter 15. Hey, Cameron, why would God want to prune me? Am I not good enough? It's not about being good enough. It's about bearing more fruit. Listen to this. I'm the vine dresser. My fa- I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Hey, Cameron, you're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. See, God doesn't prune the unbeliever. Because the unbeliever is not producing anything. God's got God's to clean them with their word. If you're cleaned with the word of God, if you've asked Jesus into your heart to cleanse you of your sin, you're saved. And that's why God is pruning you. Because he says, come on, now we're going to clean you up. Now we're going to produce something you never thought possible. Trust me, when Samson was in the prison and his eyes were gouged out, he never thought it was possible that God would use him again. But what God pruned out of him was pride and foolishness. And then his last final fruit was faithfulness. Uh, He was so, he just said, God, and and with a smile and all his strength, he did God's will. Peter, oh man, Peter, up and down, up and down. God pruned out of him pride and arrogance and unbelief. Do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? God, quit asking. I love you. And after that encounter, that pruning, he never again went back. Are you with me? You're not going backwards. You're going forwards. But to go forwards, God says, we got to drop some things. We got to reduce some things. Because that very thing that we're holding on to so tight is preventing us from going forward. Are you with me? I'm scared. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little concerned. But I'm going to trust that God's got me. I'm going to trust that God's got you. Are you with me? Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we trust you. And God, we submit to this transformation process. And God, the talk is over. And now it's time for action. So Father, we simply, our action is simply to submit and say, okay, God, you can have Yeah, you can have my alcohol. Yep, yeah, I know you, but God, you can have my nicotine. God, you've got my entertainment. God, I submit to you my rage and my unforgiveness. God, I submit to you. Yep, God, you want every dollar in my bank account? I I submit, God, whatever you tell me to do, God, whatever you ask of me, I submit it, God, yep, I give to you the Krispy Kreme. God, I give to you the the midnight snack. God, I give that to you. Yep, God, I give that. Yep, God, my bedtime. Yep, my coveted sleep. I I give that to you. God, God, I give to you my pride, my position, my air. God, I've been served at work. I haven't been serving. I've just been served. God, I give to you my position and my title. Yep, I'm going to be the one cleaning the restrooms all week. Yes, sir. Yep, I'll park the cars. I know they're supposed to park my car because I'm, I'm the big wig and I got the VIP, but I'm going to give that spot to the least of these. Yep, I'm going to park in the back. Yep, whatever you want. it, God, you need to prune it. I give it to you. Yep, they're going to say something's wrong with me. Yep, they're going to ask why. I'm just going to say, I don't know why. This is just what I'm doing. God, I give that to you. This is the time of change. So Father God, we bless you. And if you desire to submit, just say, God, I submit to you. Come on, say it boldly. I submit to you. I give you permission to prune. I've been cleaned by your word. God, 
God, we submit to you this church. We submit to you the vision that you've given us for your queen, your bride. This is not Cameron's church. This is not our church. God, this is your bride. And so God, help us to prepare us to be clean and spotless for you, God. God, prepare us for our wedding day. As we walk down the aisle to meet you, God, let us be presentable. Oh God, I pray that you would get all the glory and all the honor for all the fruit, God, that we would cast our crowns back at you and say, God, we did not do that. God, we just got to share in that with you because you did it. So, Father God, we know that greatness is coming. God, we know that healing is coming. God, we know that vision is coming. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said. Come on, as we close the service, we have two... A lovely expression.